In this video, we're going to learn how to create a more complex user interface, and we're going to learn how to add a lot of uh, interactions that an application uh, will typically have. So once you understand the principles in this video, then at that point you'll be able to go on and create really any kind of application you want after this. So we're going to start with this basic example here. And what this is doing is it's creating a window and a user interface, and then it's going to create a bunch of panels and color them so we can see where they are, uh, set the layout of each one, and then use that to kind of divide up the space of the window. And I already have the example copied into Visual Studio, so I'm gonna run it. And this is what it does. So this blue bar across the top, this is going to become our main menu. This yellow bar is going to be where we put our toolbar. We have this big blue area that we'll get to later. Uh, this On the side, we have this side panel that is locked to the right side and it maintains a constant width. width. And then at the bottom, this is where we're going to build the status bar. And we have the layout of each widget set up so it scales and stretches the way we want as the window is resized. So let's move on. First, we're going to add a menu to the program. And to do that, I'm just gonna copy this block of code. And then take this, remove this, and paste in our new code. Okay, so this is creating the main menu, and then it creates a submenu called File, another one called Edit, another called View, another called Tools, and then another called Help, and then it adds a bunch of uh, a bunch of each submenu. And there's our menu. It doesn't do anything yet. So now let's see if we can add some behavior. I'm going to copy this block of code and then go down here and I'm gonna select the widget action case. I'm just gonna get rid of that and paste in our code. So what this is doing is, depending on the menu item that was selected when this event occurs, it's going to perform different actions. For example, if the open menu gets selected by the user, then it's going to display a file requester. Um, if the help menu item is selected, then it's going to open a web page. Uh, and uh, down here, if uh, any of the if any of the menu items in the view submenu are selected, what it's going to do is select that menu item and deselect the others. And that's easier for me to show you than to explain. Here's the view submenu. And if I just click on that, then it just moves uh, which item is is check marked there. Now we're going to add a toolbar, and let's just find where. Let's see. Here it is. Just remove that and paste our code in. Okay, so what this is doing is it uh, creates a button with the toolbar style. And instead of using text, I'm using these Unicode symbols uh, for the, um, so that a little symbol will appear on the button. And uh, you can also use an SVG uh, icon, but I'm just using Unicode symbols in this example because it's it's easier to copy and paste it. So now we have a toolbar, and the buttons don't do anything yet, but it looks very nice. 
Let's see if we can add some functionality. I'm going to copy this block of code, and this is going to go inside the uh, widget action case in this big statement here. So I'll just add it to the end here. Paste that in. And what this does is if the open toolbar button is pressed, then it's going to emit a new event. It's going to emit a widget action event. And the source of the event is going to be the open menu. And what that means is that event will be encountered again when, when wait event is called. And it will trick the program into thinking that the open menu was selected by the user. And so it'll just, it, it's an easy way to execute the same, the same bit of code. Instead of having to copy um, this, this behavior here uh, down, down here for when the toolbar button is pressed, we can just redirect that into a new event and just same, have, the same, uh, have the same code work whether the menu item is selected or whether the toolbar button is pressed. And you can see whether I use the menu item or the toolbar button, we get the same result. Next, we're going to add a status bar. And our status bar is going to be pretty simple. It's just going to have one, uh, one text label. And we're going to add a little bit of code uh, for the interaction. Let me run this first, and I'll show you what, it, what it's doing right now. OK, so across the bottom here, we have this uh, label that just says perspective. And it doesn't do anything. If I change the, uh, the selected menu item up here, there's no interaction with the status bar. So let's see if we can fix that. Let's see. OK, so this block of code will go inside, will occur when a widget action event occurs. So I'm just going to add it to the end here. Actually, actually, I need what I need to do is uh, get rid of that and replace it with this. That's better. And now when, let's say, uh, I uh, select the uh, X, Y front uh, menu item here. And now the status bar updates to reflect whatever setting we have. So that's the, that's the status bar. And now let's focus on this right side panel. I'll copy and paste this block of code and then find where the side panel is created. Get rid of that. Paste our new code in. And this is just a little bit more sophisticated here. It's going to create a tabber widget and it's going to add two items called objects and scene. And then it's going to create two panels that are both uh, children of the of the tabber. So let's just run it right now. There we go. Doesn't do much, but we can see this tabbed panel with two items. And what we want to do is display these two uh, sub panels based on which tab is selected. So we have this block of code that's going to handle when a widget select event occurs. We're going to paste this in right here and just replace the widget select case with this code. And depending on which uh, 
when the uh, when a widget select event occurs, if the event source is our tabbed panel, then depending on which item is uh, was actually selected, we will show and hide the different panels. And these panels are stored in the widget item extra parameter. So the tabber ha it has two items, right? And for the extra parameter, we can just set uh, the objects panel and the seed panel to that. This is just a, a generic object and it can be used for anything you want. And it's just, you could also put these in an array if you wanted to, but this is just an easy way to handle it. And I'm going to do one more thing here. Oops. I have the microphone on my keyboard, so typing is a little bit difficult. Set color. Okay, so I'm going to change the object panel color to red. And I'll make the scene panel a different color. I'll make it green. And that will just allow us to see more easily exactly what's going on. So you can see, depending on which tab I have selected, it shows and displays a different uh, a different panel here. So let's get rid of that color code. And moving right along. Uh, this code here, there's a lot of code, but it's not actually doing much. It's just creating a bunch of widgets to put on these various panels. And none of these items are going to have any special interaction that we program, but it will just kind of fill in the program interface and make it look like a real application. So I'm going to paste that big block of code in and then run the program and I'll show you what that does. So this is the object panel and we have all these items available on it. And then there's the scene panel. We have this tree view and then a couple of uh, slider and a text field. You could add other things if you want. It just depends on what kind of program you're making. So that's the side panel. Now let's focus on this big blue area in the main panel. And we're going to fill this in with a viewport and a text console. Now the viewport could be used for rendering 3D graphics with OpenGL um, or with a 3D engine. Uh, you could also use it to display an image. It just depends on what kind of type, what type of program you're making. We're not going to go into 3D graphics in this in this video, but there are other tutorials that do show how to set that up. So I'm going to copy this block of code and then find where the main panel is created right here. And I'm just going to replace that. And I'll show you what this does. So here's our main viewport that can be used for anything we want. We're just going to make a black uh, panel for this uh, for this uh, example. And then we have our text input box down here and then this text area that can display multiple lines of text. Of course, this doesn't do anything yet. So we have to program that interaction and that's what we'll do now. We just have this one statement that we're going to add inside the widget action case. So here's widget action. I'm going to end it, add it to the end here. And that just says if an event occurs and the source is this input text field, then we're going to add that to a line of that text to the console widget, which is that multi-line text area. And we're going to set the input uh, text fields text just to a blank string 
And then we're going to make sure that we activate that, uh, that text field. That will make sure that when we hit the enter key, uh, the text field doesn't lose its focus. So let's type some text and I'm going to press enter and it gets added to the text area above. So you could use this for executing script commands or uh, just displaying text or um, typing some simple commands. It really just depends on what kind of program you're making. Now I want to show you something a little bit different. We're going to create a second window here and I'm going to show you how you can kind of guide the user experience and direct the user into doing what they're supposed to be doing within your program. I'm going to add this code up here. You can add it really anywhere after the, uh, after the uh, main window is created, but I'll just add it right before the main loop starts. And this is calling create window and it's using the window hidden style flag. And that means that the window will be completely invisible by default. So if I ran the program right now, you wouldn't be able to see anything because the window is already hidden. So we do need some code that will show that window. Now this block of code, it will, um, if the options menu item is selected, then it will show the options window. It will activate it so that it's the currently focused window. And then it's going to disable the main window so that it can't be interacted with. Now if the OK button or the cancel button on the options window is pressed, then it's going to emit a window close event with the options window as the source. We have the second block of code and this goes in the window close case statement. And what this does is if the options window is closed or you know if the program has been tricked into thinking that the options window has been closed by emitting event emitting an event, then the main window is enabled again. The main window is activated so that it is the currently focused window and then the options window will then be hidden. So that first block of code goes inside the widget action statement. And the second block of code will go inside the window close statement. Let's see what that does. So I'm going to press the toolbar button and that opens the, uh, the options window here. These buttons don't really do anything. They just look nice. And if I close this window, well, first, if I, if I click outside on the main window, it's completely disabled. It can't do anything. So only this window can be interacted with. If I close this window, then I can once again interact with the main window. Let's open the options window again, this time by pressing the options menu item. And again, if I press the OK or cancel button, it just fires off that window close event and tricks the program into thinking that I closed the window. There you go. So now you understand how to build a fairly complex application interface. Again, we're not building a a finished application here, but this could be turned into a lot of different things. It just depends on what kind of program you want to make. But really at this point, you have the tools to create pretty much anything you want.